Hello everyone, my name is Bosco Miranda and today I'll be talking to you about a man named John C. Calhoun. So to start off, John C. Calhoun was born on 1782. He, um, he grew up in a wealthy family and was very educated at a young age. He actually ended up going to Yale and graduated from there in the year 1804, I believe. Um, he was very involved in politics. He started off as a congressman, then became a senator, and then, which was probably like his peak in his political career, he became a vice president, which I'll get into that later on. And then after that, he became the secretary of state. So what kind of made um, what kind of like identified John C. Calhoun's political beliefs was that he believed in slavery. He was one of the few men that actually supported it. Um, and he said that the reason he supported it was because for some reason, I have no idea why, but he said it supported both the slaves and the slave owner. Um, another thing he stood by was states rights which states rights um is seen today as well for example we have the topic of abortion that is um in some states is legal and in other states is illegal and he believed in that he also believed in nullification which is kind of the same the this it's a state's power to um, decline a law so that kind of goes hand in hand he was part of the Democratic Party in where he was both vice president for John Quincy Adams and Andrew Jackson. He did not get along. Um, he did not get along with both of them at all. That's why it lasted, it lasted such a short time. It lasted around seven years that he was vice president for both. And um, after that, he after he was vice president for both presidents, he actually went on to be secretary of state. Um, he did this because he believed that in this position, he had a greater impact on what I mentioned before, um, states rights, and he didn't really have an impact on that as a vice president. So, so yeah, that's why he moved positions. He also was very, um, he did not like the American system as he believed that it only benefited the North and it didn't benefit the South. And obviously he stood by this because he was part of the South. He's from North, so South Carolina. So he stood by this. Um, so yeah, so that was pretty much it um, from his political career. And then after that, he was a very, I don't know how to say it, but he was a very like a paranoid man so after his wife died his wife died and the reason he thinks that his wife died were because of political enemies so i don't know if that was, i don't know if that was true or not um but he was very paranoid he always like slept with one eye open i guess you could say um and at the end of that he died in the year 1850 in his home in washington what was he most famous for so what he was most famous for was I said before, um, his so like his strong belief in states' rights. Um, he supported this, and it's one of the um, one of the things that we see nowadays that um, that comes from that was an idea from such a long time ago. What was his biggest accomplishment? So his biggest accomplishment is I would say, I didn't mention this before, but it was the, like he reorganized um, the armed forces and of the United States and military academy at West Point. So although he wasn't liked by many, I mean, maybe as the timeline developed, he started getting liked by few people because of his um, belief of slavery but i say during that time he was 
a very like man he um he made a lot of good points and he changed the way we look at politics and the way we decide on laws nowadays and nullification as well so thank you class for listening thank you sir and thank you to my sister have a good day everyone